confiscate guns from veterans and retired police. Even though that's all public, they can't have a debate about it because if they allow us to have a debate, if they admit it's all going on, then we will morally win the day. So they just want to deny all this is happening. Kind of like they want to deny Obamacare is written by offshore banks to double your premiums. Or there's death panels, even though they're in the bill. Or that the IRS hired 17,000 agents to take $5,000 out of your bank account. I mean, that's in the bill. So of course it's beginning. Because that's what the bill says. But they count on people not going and reading the stinking bill. And then they have... Those traitors on MSNBC go, Alex Jones is a racist. He lies and says the IRS is going to take money out of your account. Listen, you witch, M Mad Al, you know full well it's in that stinking bill. I'm sorry, Paul, go ahead. Final comment. Well, it's interesting how the media controls it because individually they're dying. You know, CNN losing half their viewership over the past year. But in concert which they always work in concert to create national talking points. That's how they frame conversations. That's how they prevent anything important from becoming a national conversation. So they've still got that power when they work together, which they fundamentally routinely do. So the fact that we're growing so much allows us to create these national conversations to a greater and greater degree. And this is one that needs to happen. That is our greatest power, and I thank God for it, and all of our friends and the real media for it. Yeah, that's the great responsibility. It's the opposite of a power trip. It is a great responsibility that Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and our reporters and you, Paul Watson, and the great team are able every week now to spur huge national conversations and legislation, which MSNBC and the White House bemoan. They track us as the source of so much resistance because we see who you are, enemy. I mean, you're naked. We're like a three-year-old saying the emperor is not wearing any clothes. It's over, scum. And you can't take out InfoWars because if you did, it would make us martyrs. It's already spread. People already know you're the enemy. They already know you're outsider, outslander, usurper, globalist, outlanders, New World Order traitors in here to try to take over our country. And it is not going to work. You are going to fall. You are being identified. You are being, you are, you will fail. In the old times, we were fighting Stalin or Hitler. Open enemies you could see. This is a corporate takeover. We can now see it. We can see it's an outside occupation, a corporate global takeover, in their own words, and we're countering it. Great job, Paul Joseph Watson. Thanks, Alex. All right. Now, when we come back at you know seven eight after next hour, we're going to start the official march. That's going to start right at noon. We're going to be covering it live. Uh, as they march down into South by Southwest uh, from the corner of San Jacinto and Congress. And we go now to Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson and others. We have multiple live feeds right now. Um, and again, these are the modern day Paul Revere's, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the modern day Paul Revere's are down there to march openly with their firearms to show everyone that citizens have a right to have guns, not just the God state, not just the centralized system. Uh, are our reporters ready for us to go to them? All right. I can't. I'm getting a in and out of the audio feed. But. Okay, uh, Leanne, you're on the air. I like your T-shirt, <laughs> Molan Labe. Hey, I've been told it's actually quite blinding out here with this golden foil, but you are a my... Valkyrie of self-defense. <laughs> yes, Wonder Woman's got her golden lassos of truth. I have got my golden guns of liberty. So, come and take it. <laughs> freedom, freedom is sexy. You know what I mean? <laughs> it sure is, Leanne. So we've got a really nice sized crowd already. We still got about, what, 20 minutes until noon. We're out here standing right about in front of the Capitol at 12th in San Jacinto. There's plenty of parking in the Capitol parking garage. So we've got probably about 50 people out here already. And I'm standing here with Justin Delosh. He is one of the organizers for Come and Take It Austin. So what are some of the safety precautions that you're gonna be letting everyone know about before we get started? Uh, before we get started, we'll huddle, huddle everybody up. We do like a, a buddy system chamber check where you basically, the person to your left of you and the person to the right of you, we each check our chamber to make sure none of us are carrying chambered. Uh, magazines loaded or empty, it's a preference, but we do not carry chambered. And we also make sure that uh, everybody's carrying their muzzle and buttstock as close to 6 and 12 o'clock as possible. So we've had a lot of press out here. We've already got a visit from the Capitol Police, and they were very nice, actually. They uh, said that they support what we're doing out here, and they're just going to basically escort us 
through South by Southwest, since we do have a mixed crowd out there, people are drinking during the daytime, so you just never know how they're gonna they're gonna get wild. But what is your what is your aim here with the public today? Uh, our goal is to educate people on the gun laws here in Texas, and to, to educate people to let them know that we're actually behind in gun laws, whereas the rumors are Texas is a gun-friendly state, and we're actually one of only six states in the U.S. that does not have any form of open carry for handguns. So we'd like to see a uh, constitutional carry, or at least open carry passed here in Texas. Exactly, and it seems like we got a lot of support for that, a lot of people going by honking and everything. Also, too, it's sort of a, a way to let people, kind of re-educate people and wake them up from the massive brainwashing that's been going on with guns. Uh, exactly. We actively seek people to have this kind of dialogue about the firearm laws, you know what I'm saying? Because those people that may be on the fence, we actively go out there to, to, to address some of the issues they may have regarding firearms or maybe lack of knowledge. We actually actively go out there and engage in this kind of dialogue with them. To, to help educate. Leanne, uh, get them to plug the different gun groups' websites for folks that want to get involved. Can you plug a few of the different gun groups' websites so anyone that wants to get involved? Um, yeah, we're, we're with uh, Come and Take It Austin. We have a, we have a Facebook page, Come and Take It Austin. Uh, the, we have 30 chapters across Texas, so we're actually part of a bigger group called Come and Take It Texas. So if anybody goes Facebook, Come and Take It Texas, they can find their chapter there. And we're, we're, doing, we're doing rallies and walks every month. Very good. We're going to be talking to him more as we march, Leanne. I see the owner of Central Texas Gunworks behind you and a reporter, Kit Daniels, for InfoWars. Let's talk to some of those guys. And uh, while you're talking to him, we can pan around and show the crowd yeah. and some of the uh, firearms that are there. Hey, how are you doing? Very well. All right. So I'm this is, I know, I'm blocking the sun here. <laughs> So, Mike Cargill. Oh, yeah, get Mike uh, Cargill's Texas take on work. this. So what's your take on, on this event here today? Ah, it's about freedom. About peace, love, and freedom. <laughs> and education, re-education for the public. Absolutely, absolutely. In the Soviet absolutely camp, educating yes. Educating the public, letting them know what the laws are here in the state of Texas, that it is legal for you to open carry a long gun here in the state of Texas. Would you like to see that open carry law go a little bit further? Absolutely. I like to see, I like to be able to open carry my handgun. You know, that's something that I'm most comfortable with. You know, right now I have to conceal my handgun. I have two handguns on me right now that are concealed, and I would love to open carry those handguns. All right, I think it's so frustrating because you, with the concealed carry, you can only let people know you've got it if you are going to kill them. I mean, I think that's, that's kind of a backwards cause there. Well, concealed carry is about personal protection, just like, you know, um, carrying a firearm, it can be about personal protection, but also, it's also about, you know, hunting. It's about other different things that are out there also, not just, you know, for, for protection. Right. So We're getting ready to have this march. Uh, ask him what he thinks of Bloomberg trying to shut down free speech of gun groups on Facebook. Uh, and uh, the oh, fact okay. that they tried to stop us from handing out our pro-gun magazines oh, at South by Southwest. What do you think about Bloomberg trying to shut down the uh, free speech of the, you know, people supporting Second Amendment and gun rights on Facebook? They're shutting down those groups there that are very vocal about the Second Amendment. They tried to stop us from passing out magazines here last year. Well, there are a lot of things that I'm really disappointed with. I'm really disappointed the fact that um, our... Uh, Attorney General Greg Abbott actually was on the one of the attorneys that was actually supporting um, not allowing 18 year olds, 19, 20 year olds to be able to um, illegally purchase a firearm from a gun from a dealer. I'm disappointed in that um, because, you know, we will allow these guys that are 18, 19 and 20 to go overseas and, you know, to give their life for this country. But when they come back, you know, from serving their country, they're not, they're not allowed to purchase a firearm. So those are some of the things that I'm disappointed and, and very hurt over. Right. Just a massive brainwashing. So that's kind of what we're out here to do today is just to educate. There are, it's, there's an international crowd here today. People have descended upon Austin for South by Southwest. They're going to get a little taste of Texas and our gun laws here. Um, Leanne, I see different reports, 200 to 300,000 extra people in the city. The things that we like most in Texas, we love our firearms, we love our freedom, and we're going to let the world know that to here today. <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, I'm going to go take my concealed carry finally from Cargill coming up here soon. Uh, he's a great guy, Central Texas Gunworks, great folks. I still haven't gotten my concealed carry, folks. I just carry a rifle in the truck because uh, I just have never had time to go do it. Uh, but now I'm just, I've, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to start carrying at all times. 
because of so many threats and things we're going through. Leanne, we're going to break here in a few minutes, but uh, Jakari Jackson and you are going to be out there with your feed. Your Skype feed is crystal clear. The other one's bad. So we probably want to mainly go with your feed with you and Jakari marching together. Uh, getting commentary, but uh, who else should we talk to? Maybe Kit Daniels over there. Let's get Kit Daniels, Infowars.com uh, reporter's take on this to to uh, estimate the number. How many people does he estimate in this uh, only one day planned uh, event are already out there? I'd say at least 75, maybe even 100. Way This is probably more, way more than what the attendance at the Bloomberg anti-gun event on Saturday morning, which had maybe less than Maybe five? Maybe. Well, there were about five people on the dais calling for an end of pro-gun free speech, literally. They're now attacking the First Amendment savagely. And then they had about a dozen reporters out there sycophantically reporting uh, all of it. You know, they, Bloomberg would vomit out the lies. They would eat it and then vomit it back out on us uh, in a kind of circular logic situation. But this is an impromptu with one-day planning, two-day planning. Uh, Saturday, uh, your article's up on Infowars.com. Uh, kit for folks that want to find more. What time is the event Saturday? Uh, the the big march uh, to Saturday. I believe it's going to be at noon. But same spot, think, San Jacinto yes. and Congress. It's the event Saturday at noon, 11:30. We need to meet up at 11:30. We'll probably march out about noon. Okay. Yep. Meet up at 11:30. Probably march about noon. Same time. Same time. Same All place. Right. Now listen. I know the right. Capitol Police get off their jurisdiction there at the Capitol because uh, they have a wider jurisdiction in the state. Uh, I know the Austin police have not been uh, as anti-open carry as some of the state police orders they've gotten. I know the state police individually are, are, are pro-Second Amendment, but they've been following some of the legal orders uh, in the past. Now, now, who is going to, quote, be marching with you guys? Is it state police? Ask Kit, because I'm not clear on that. Uh, or is it going to be Austin police? The, uh, we're wondering which of the police are actually going to be escorting us today through the crowd. That, that group right there. Those are the Capitol Police. Austin. Those are Austin PD. Yeah, yeah, so yeah the no, PD. That's what I thought. I didn't think the state police were going to be doing that. And again, we have this right to open carry. And if the, if they want to have police there, show that, you know, some trendy doesn't come up and punch one of our people in the nose, which has never happened, uh, you know, that's fine. The point is we're going to exercise these rights. We're going to sit at the front of the bus if we want to. We're going to eat at the lunch counters if we want to. We're going to vote if we want to. This is the real cutting edge of the civil rights movement, Leanne. Exactly, and that's what we just want to educate everyone out here, that we are doing this for them. So they, whether they agree with it or not, we are fighting for their freedom, that's for right. their liberty. The march is about to begin. Leanne, walk over to the police if you can right now uh, and uh, get us some shots of that. We'll come back from break, maybe talk to them briefly as you guys get ready to march uh, here in just a few minutes. Uh, true Paul Revere's marching for the Second Amendment. If Josh or Do or whoever's running that camera would aim it at the police, that'd be good. Because uh, I want to uh, see that. Where are they? Losing my feed. I can't see them. Are they just waiting over there, or what's going to go on here? I can't hear them. No, they're just waiting. They're just waiting over there, waiting oh, I for see us them. to start marching. What is that, about four Austin police? Four. Four. There are four now. I saw a few more earlier, but I guess these will be our official escorts. Now, remember, folks, all these trendies are going to learn, not just citizens, uh, you know, of uh, Soviet Russia who had their guns taken. It can happen here as well. And it's not only government that gets to have guns. It's, it's, it's we the people. And I took a bunch of Californians out, uh, Hollywood people, yesterday with Mike Judge. Yeah, he's a Texan and gun owner. And we had them all shoot guns. They're all addicted. So that's how you convert the Borg is you take them out shooting. And we had these, you know, Hollywood folks, actresses, actors, you name it, shooting 50 cals. I mean, they didn't just shoot guns for the first time. They went right to 50 cals. They went right to M, you know, 308 Reapers and M4223s. And it was a beautiful thing. I think I converted at least four people yesterday to Liberty. Thank you. For Live March coming up, second it. hour. Paul Revere, Visit 21st Century. Taking our freedoms today. back by exercising them. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. 
Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield Nascent Iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield Nascent Iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.